you are already into dharma and uh, i'm sure you will have a lot of questions about dharma what is my dharma presentation is put together on the what is dharma what is a dharma what is gita why we chose the gita and who performs a dharma who performs dharma what are the causes of a dharma that is very very important to understand that how to discriminate between a dharma and dharma we always get very confused should i do this or not so i have to cover that area how to convert a dharma into dharma role of mind and gunas self transformation and self purification and then there is action plan which is seven steps and then benefit of following the dharma so what is a dharma course of righteous livings are not followed so own obligatory duty is not fulfilled and unethical behavior is practiced examples again dhritarashtra and duryodhana so what is dharma basically opposite of dharma dh dharma is dharma so course of righteous living are followed own prescribed duty is fulfilled ethical behavior is practiced respecting others rights and others is dharma but insulting others is a dharma loving others is dharma but hating others is a dharma sharing with others is dharma but is snatching from others is adharma gita is a spiritual and i have emphasized a secular and practical guide to help how to discriminate between adharma and dharma so why bhagavad gita it helps to identify what is my dharma how to perform my dharma it teaches how to change your action karma which do it all we do it all the time into selfless action dharma fulfill our responsibilities and attain eternal happiness and peace and ananda we all work to feel happy you come to this class you want to learn something and when you you get the good grades and achieve something you feel good about it you go to school you do good things for in the society volunteer works whatever you do every human being works for to feel happy within happiness being happy and spreading the happiness to others is my duty number 1 developing good qualities means wise my virtues is my duty developing developing wisdom is my duty thinking good speaking good seeing good hearing good eating good helping others doing selfless service so being in peace and making this world a peaceful place to live is my duty so that's where the dharma is all about so causes of a dharma we talked about it attachment selfish desires anger greed ego envy jealousy hatred and resentment insomnia depression diseases you can name it high blood pressure cancer immune diseases all those are cause of stress and unhappiness and then disturbance in, in mind and disturb life and then no peace so how to remove the causes of adharma now we talked about lot about adharma and the reason i talked more about adharma because if we know the adharma then we can do something about it you have to have a love compassion for the what you do and for the others otherwise you will not be able to do your dharma so having a love in your heart for other is very very important so how to transcend everything is in the mind so reprogram the mind and remove the impurities in the mind how you do it it is called self purification and self transformation and why you have to reprogram the mind because mind is the one which has lot of data is stored which we call impressions and it has gives you the auto responses the subconscious mind has lot of data there that's why when we sit in the car and automatically we start driving because the information is stored here but if i want to learn something new i have to put a conscious effort that's why mind is very very important 
to use the conscious mind to clean the subconscious mind. So our mind can be our dearest friend or worst Down. enemy. So can you try? uplift your lower mind, which is the negativity of the mind, and bring it to the positivity or more, put more love and devotion into it, then you will become more uh, compassionate. <coughs> and so uplift yourself. And the one who uplifts himself is the friend, but who does not, he is the enemy of himself. So our mind can be our dearest friend or worst enemy. And try it. If you put some thoughts in the morning, certain days you put a good thought, whole day you will be having a good day. But if you put some negative thought in the morning and you get angry, whole day you will be angry. That's the beauty of the mind. So there are seven steps. So we have to self-discipline ourselves, have a divine and ethical company as Arjuna had Krishna with him, and then do the practice the Karam Yoga with love and devotion, and know what you're doing, and take care of yourself, and do the best what you can do. So basically, the benefit of the practicing the karma, uh, dharma is triple benefit. You will have a prosperity, victory, and glory, and peace within yourself. And once you have the peace within yourself, you could extend to your family, your community, and your nation. So choice is ours, whether we want to practice dharma or adharma. Hi, my name is Mihir Deo, and I'm from the University of California, Berkeley, uh, majoring in uh, business and economics. And I thought uh, that today's presentation was very insightful. It gave a lot of insights into the Bhagavad Gita and Dharma and Adharma. Um, but one of the key questions that came up in my mind as uh, the presentation was going on is that in an increasingly competitive world, it's uh, more and more difficult to uh, pertain to what you would call a duty. Uh, for example, a question that I asked uh, earlier was that in Berkeley's competitive environment, uh, we have to succeed at the expense of others. Therefore, for example, if someone comes up to me and asks me for answers on homework or any help in my particular class, is it against my duty to help them out? And in turn, that might hurt my grade because they got extra help? Or uh, is it my duty to help them out and make sure that they do well on the test as well? So uh, just th those are just an example of some of the questions I have. It was definitely insightful on the duties and everything. And I definitely uh, will look up things and uh, research more into this book as well. I thought the presentation was valuable. Um, I'm a first year here at Cal, and I'm trying to navigate the university. And I'm kind of confused in which uh, major I would like to pursue. And I really, in particular, I really liked the, um, the set of questions she provided for us. And this is I kind of gave her guidance. And that's hopefully something I will uh, mirror when I ask myself in terms of not only which major I want to pursue, but also uh, it could be an occupation in the future or um, any sort of self-interested desire in terms of is it more for my personal benefit or more for the entire world. Um. Hi, my name is Joe Palmieri, and I am the assistant to the professor, um, Prashita Pandilamoya that is uh, the lecturer for the course that hosted uh, Satya Kaura. And just wanted to say that we really appreciated the lecture. We really were delighted to have a lecture that uh, presented the Gita in such a straightforward and accessible way. Nice. And Professor Bill Amoria said, you know, it was a nice change of pace just to um, go back to what you might call the origins of um, the traditions that to, we study, um, um, to see things in, in terms of their practicality, their applicability, and or well. in, in terms of a narrative rather than in terms of a theory and um, you know uh, syllogisms and stuff like that. I think that Satya Kalra has really succeeded in in her lecture as well as in her book and uh, those two objectives of accessibility and applicability. Thank you. So whatever you do, but do your best and must be for the benefit of all.
Overall, I thought the presentation was amazing and personally very valuable, and I look forward to reading the book.